We've now introduced the idea of a production function, a function that tells us for any combination of labor and capital, how much of the output X we're going to be able to produce. And we've shown what such a function might look like in three dimensions when we can vary both labor and capital. But we've also said that in the short run, we'll assume that capital is fixed. So in the short run, we'll operate on a slice of that three dimensional picture, a slice that looks something like this. So along that slice, we have the production function that tells us for any amount of labor, how much output we're going to be able to produce, assuming capital is held fixed at a certain level. I now want to relate the shape of this to the idea of marginal product of labor. So let me begin by defining what we mean by the marginal product of an input. So the marginal product of an input is the additional output that's produced when one more unit of the input is hired. holding all other inputs fixed. So in our case, we have one other input, capital. We hold it fixed. And we ask, what's the additional output produced when one more unit of the input labor is hired? So suppose we're at this point of the production function and we ask how much additional output am I going to produce by hiring one more unit of labor? Well, I would look at the slope of this. The slope of this will tell me as I go over by one, how much am I going to go up? How much additional output am I going to produce? So the marginal product of labor then is equal to the slope of this short-run production function. And we know how to express that mathematically. It's just the derivative of this function with respect to labor. Since we have another variable, that's going to be a partial derivative. When we first introduced partial derivatives, we said partial derivatives of just derivatives of slices of more complicated functions. Here we have such a slice. The derivative of that is the partial derivative of the more complicated production function with respect to labor. How much additional output do we get from one more unit of labor? And we can see that initially that slope is a small number, it's shallow, but it's getting steeper and steeper, so it's becoming a bigger and bigger number all the way up to some inflection point like this, at which point it starts becoming shallower again it starts becoming a smaller and smaller number. So we could graph what that looks like in a picture with labor and output, where we say initially the marginal product for the first units of labor is low. The, addition, the first worker isn't adding a lot to my output. The slope is shallow. Then the slope, slope gets steeper and steeper all the way up to this level of labor. So the marginal product of labor is increasing. But once we get past this amount of labor, the additional workers I hire are adding less and less to my total output. So marginal product of labor is falling. And you can see where the rising part arises from and where the falling part arises from. The rising part comes from this part of the short run production function. And the falling part comes from this concave part over here. We say that eventually the marginal product of any input is going to have to diminish. It's going to have to fall. And we call that the law of diminishing marginal product. And we say it's a law because it has to be true. It comes from the laws of physics, not economics. Imagine having a certain factory space. 
a certain fixed level of capital and then we add workers into that space eventually that space is going to get more crammed eventually as I hire additional workers they're not going to add as much to my total output as the previous workers did eventually I'm not going to be able to fit any more workers into that fixed factory space so if the law of diminishing marginal product didn't hold I could keep stuffing workers into that factory and each new worker would add more to my total output than the previous worker did until I have the whole population of the world into the factory space. Now that's obviously not physically possible. That's where the law of diminishing marginal product comes from. And so the fact that marginal product eventually has to be diminishing means that these short-run production functions eventually have to become concave if they don't start that way. Eventually they'll be concave. So the law of diminishing marginal product of an input says that as we increase an input holding all others fixed eventually the marginal product must be falling or stated math mathematically we could say that eventually it has to be the case that this slope becomes negative eventually it has to be the case that derivative of this function is negative so eventually the derivative of the marginal product of labor with respect to labor has to be less than zero which can of course also be expressed as a second derivative of the production function so that's the law of diminishing marginal product of labor now there's one final idea I want to introduce which is the idea of the marginal revenue product and that's a simple extension of the idea of the marginal product the marginal product of an input is how much additional output we're going to get from hiring one more unit of that input the marginal revenue product is how much additional revenue we're going to get by hiring one more unit of the input so the marginal revenue product of labor is equal to how much each additional worker will produce for me in terms of output times what I can sell that output for times the price so this is the output price if I multiply how many goods I get from a worker times the price that I can sell those goods for, I get the revenue that that worker produces for me. So marginal revenue product is measured in dollars. So we could now put dollars on the vertical axis. Keep labor on the horizontal axis. And it's just equal to price times marginal product of labor. So if we know what marginal product of labor is, we just multiply that by a number. If price is greater than 1, it'll scale that up. If it's less than 1, it's, it'll scale it down. But it'll keep that exact shape. So its peak will still happen at the same quantity of labor. And it'll still have this inverse U shape, just like marginal product of labor.